So we just talked about normal lipid transport. Now we're going to talk about what happens when it goes wrong. And these are all familial diseases. There's four dyslipidemias. So four problems where the lipid transport goes wrong. It's kind of hard to memorize. It's more um, biochemistry related stuff. But uh, watch on if it's relevant to you. Which it may be tested on step one. But a bit lower yield. Um, first one is hyperchylomicronemia autosomal recessive the problem here is a defect in lipoprotein lipase or apolipoprotein c2 deficiency so remember what lipoprotein lipase does is it breaks down those triglycerides into free fatty acids and then apoprotein lipoprotein c2 is what remember what that does when we need that to activate the lipoprotein lipase so either one messed up you're not getting um you remember we have the triglycerides to free fatty acids and this does not work so if that happens what will be increased well what what does lipoprotein lipase act on Remember, it acts on the chylomicrons it acts on triglycerides so if that's not working those will both be increased cholesterol will also be increased so you're going to have high chylomicrons high triglycerides high cholesterol Clinically, if you have too high triglycerides, it can cause something called pancre it can cause pancreatitis. If you don't know what that is, that's inflammation in the pancreas. And triglyceride, high triglyceride can be a cause of that. You can also have hepatosplenomegaly, um, and then xanthomas. Um, xanthomas are just very uh, accumulations of the lipids in your skin. And we're gonna I'll show you a picture of this later. So the next one is called familial hypo, hypercholesterolemia. This is autosomal dominant. And the problem here is an absent or defective LDL receptor or a defective AFOB100 protein. And this is needed for LDL to bind to its receptor. So for both of these, if um, you, you basically knock out LDL. LDL doesn't work. LDL receptor doesn't work for either of these. Um, because either you don't have the receptor itself, or you don't have the apoprotein needed to bind it. Um, and if that happens, what what will be increased? Well, obviously, then if in the blood, if if you if the LDL can't bind to the receptor in the liver, then it's just gonna be hanging out on the blood. So it's gonna be the LDL is gonna be increased in your blood levels and um, cholesterol too. Um, clinically, remember this is hetero this is autosomal dominant. If you have a heterozygote, you're gonna have cholesterol levels of over three hundred. Which is already very high. I mean, we want to be around less than around a hundred or less. Um, homozygotes have even higher. It can be up to seven hundred. This is very rare, but this is, this is very problematic. Um, I talked a little bit about how LDL is involved in uh, atherosclerosis, and if, and if you have this ridiculously high number of cholesterol and LDL in your blood, you're going to be accelerating your atherosclerosis. These people can, atherosclerosis, if it's, if it's too much in the coronary arteries, it can lead to a myocardial infarction and MI. And for these people, it can happen before by the age of 20. So it's, it's ridiculous. It's crazy. Um, all right. So next is this beta lipoproteinemia. It's autosomal recessive. This is a defect in the APOE lipopro, um, apoprotein. So remember what APOE does. Remember this is what is needed to direct the chylomicron remnants and the um, and the IDL remnants back to the liver. So if you don't have those, those are not going to get sent back to the liver. And instead, they're going to hang out in the blood. So what will happen in your in your blood? You're going to have increased levels of chylomicrons. You're going to have increased levels of VLDL. So VLDL is just a precursor to IDL. So um, APOE removes the remnants of both of these two. Um, the clinical complications of this are going to be, again, you're going to have high cholesterol, high, LD, high LDL, you're going to have premature atherosclerosis, you're going to have xanthomas. So you see xanthomas over and over again. This is just accumulations of the high lipids in your skin. Last one is hypertriglyceridemia. Um, this is autosomal dominant. And the way I honestly remember the inheritance pattern is I just remember this chart and it's every other. So it first starts with autosomal recessive, then it's dominant, then it's recessive, then it's dominant. That's the easiest way for, for me to remember it. And in this number four, the problem here is overproduction of VLDL in the liver. 
of VLDL and triglycerides. So if you're gonna making a lot, it's gonna get spit onto the blood, so your bloodstream will also have increased triglycerides and VLDL. And um, we talked about this before, but very high triglycerides can be a risk factor for pancreatitis. So that's a little whirlwind tour. Remember, these are four dyslipidemias. Um, lower yield, but it does show what happens. It kind of illustrates the clinical relevance of our lipid, lipid transport and what happens when it goes wrong. So next is signs of lip, hyperlipidemia. I talked about xanthoma a lot. Remember, we, it showed up for pretty much all of those dyslipidemias. Remember, this is... Um, this was a plaque made of lipid-laden histiocytes. Um, so a plaque is just like a large uh, raised part of the skin. And this is what it looks like. And often you see it on the eyelids too. And that's called xanthalis, xanth xanthalasma. I probably said it wrong. Next one is tendinous xanthoma. So if you can imagine from the name, it's lipid deposits in the tendon. And very commonly, this occurs in the Achilles tendon. I've shown it here in the tendons of your fingers. So lipid deposits causes raised bumps on the fingers. The last one is called corneal arcus. This is when the lipid goes into the corneas. You can see that there's a ring here around the eyes, that blue ring. That's very classic for corneal arcus. Uh, oftentimes, you see in the elderly because elderly people will have more they have higher and higher lipids, higher and higher cholesterol. But if you have a younger person with hypercholesterolemia, so any of those dyslipidemias we saw in the in the previous slide, then they can have this corneal arcus. So these are all signs of when you have hyperlipidemia or high cholesterol. Those are I just I just use those terms interchangeably. All right, so that's it for our lecture on lipid metabolism and its pathology.